Welcome, freelancers, to our Anthem show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Joining me today is Eric. How's it going? Thanks and, for having me. Of course. And Dantix. Hi again. Hello. Good to see you, sir. And on today's show, basically, we're going to be discussing the fact that we are we are five days out from launch yeah. of the game. We're getting mm. pretty, pretty excited. And there's been actually a ton of news and conversation from the developers about what we can expect at launch. So we're gonna be looking at the future roadmap. We're gonna be talking about the acts and things that we can expect from that. All of the AM, AM, A, 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 A info that we <laughs> thought hey, was hey, particularly hey. interesting. Uh, the launch trailer hype, uh, because of how it focuses on uh, the story over time. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's coming in at this interesting time. We have Anthem versus Destiny versus Division, and that conversation has been going going on for a while. We'll talk about sort of the differences between each. And yeah, so let's get right into it. This week, we, they revealed the roadmap, you guys, and it kind of mm -hmm. outlines what we can expect going forward with Anthem in the near, near future. Basically, I'll just read what it says really quick. It says launch, official launch, 222. Act one is mm -hmm. Echoes of Reality, and then Act two, Redacted, and Act three is also Redacted. And to, to outline what Act one was, it was Update one, Evolving World, Update two, Stronger Together, and Update three, The Cataclysm. New events, quality of life changes, new rewards, expanded progression system, new strongholds, guilds and leaderboards, new missions, the cataclysm all this is very 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 exciting was there anything that particular that stood out to you guys uh eric's maybe start with you so i think uh the two on the kind of bottom for me were expanded progression system and obviously the stronghold i mean the stronghold oh, right yeah. now is obviously one of the main things that you know, i really enjoy the strongholds we played there's still mm -hmm. obviously one more we need to experience but if they can add more of them you know they are a really cool end game activity so obviously that that will that will ever every single one of those that they add that expands our end game loop which is cool but the progression system is quite interesting because obviously the icon for it is the kind of icon that is uh synonymous with the forge i believe i believe that's a similar one for that one mm -hmm. so i'm wondering whether that hints are potentially you know like for for us as far as you know the the game is concerned in its current state progression is you know getting more abilities getting more components getting more weapons so whether that means additional abilities on top you know whether they can add and expand the pool for the javelins or whether there's things like that so that that uh that's probably the thing that i'm kind of most excited about because some of the other ones sort of make make sense whereas that one's like a hmm what could it be kind of thing mm -hmm. and the one that uh really excited me echoing off of what you said was definitely the strongholds because all i've heard is only three strongholds at launch well okay <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're going to add more they're going to roll them out slowly and i'm guessing that they're going to tie into the campaign into the narrative of what anthem is going to be and i i, I like this strategy uh what do you think about it dantix yeah I'm, I'm the same the stronghold for me stood out uh, also the quality of life improvements now i'm expecting mm -hmm. those to be just little changes over time that really help the game uh, little things like ui updates for example and the other thing is to that was guilds now mm -hmm. i'm really excited for guilds i really really want that because um i have a lot more fun with these kinds of games when we can all kind of play together get rewards Definitely. for playing together i know there's the alliance system already but even people in my discord they really want to be able to to jump online see all their friends contribute to like guild related activities so this kind of thing really mm -hmm. excites me same with the stronghold though stronghold the most so <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. uh ben irving gave a little bit of a breakdown i'm just bringing it right now about the guild system so there's there's two separations to that and we'll get into the, the full amaa but this one's really really important the alliance yeah. system what is this and how does it work the alliance system is a way for you and your close friends to be rewarded for playing the game anytime you complete an expedition mission contract free play stronghold you earn experience anyway uh hmm. how it works is that is how you're going to get your coin it does have a cap every week, but basically it's for you and your friends playing together or not playing together, and it's a reward system. So that's one way that you're gonna be able to earn coin in game. That's really, really great, to, and to answer everybody's questions about microtransactions. And then guilds, what are those? Uh, guilds are not gonna be available at launch, he said. Uh, but they do believe in the Alliance system is a great way to encourage social interaction with Anthem, but they understand that guilds play a critical role in matchmaking. So I, I was really glad about the transparency on this because when we were doing the IGN first, uh, they hadn't had a, a clear way to explain it, but this makes 
much, much more sense to me. And mm -hmm. I was yeah. really, really happy to hear it sort of fleshed out. So mm -hmm. with this roadmap, I think this is an excellent launch strategy that they've had thus far, because with Destiny, I, like, I don't know what's coming in March. We know there's stuff coming, yeah. right? And this is just like, hey, this is act one of what to expect mm. for the Anthem universe. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like how they handled this. It is a little vague. And yeah. Uh, yeah. that's the only thing. Uh, Echoes of Reality, though. That's an interesting title. It has to do with the Shaper, the Shaper Relics, right? Must be. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. Some of the I, think, I think you're right. I think I think it definitely is like you know, although it's vague right now, I think I think they kind of there probably comes a point where there's there's so much they can say like before launch. So at least mm -hmm. this kind of sort of this is this is basically like an appointment to view. It's almost like them saying this is the stuff we're going to talk about very soon after the game comes out, and then they can start expanding on it very soon. But as you say, we've already got a roadmap for that. I think the most important thing from that as well is because um, I know there was some confusion online. Like all of this is free. So like if you have Anthem, like this will be coming to everyone. Like there's not yep. going to be like yeah. a, you need to buy Good this, point. right? Mm -hmm. like that's just and, and i mean i think that's just gonna be like so so and they, they've said that for all the apps right so at least as far mm -hmm. as we know like app one two and three so like you buy the game and for a good while you're gonna be getting a ton of free content which is nice mm -hmm. my assumption when first seeing this was um obviously that they're rolling it out over three stages mm -hmm. but i thought those three stages had some kind of collaboration theme to it like the new events i expect that to come out with the evolving world update mm -hmm. and that to have something Probably, to do yeah. with the yeah the ultimate update three which will be a cataclysm so i'm mm -hmm. expecting that to all kind of like have a narrative to it that's that's what i think it might mm -hmm. not be the case but uh it, it would be really cool to see that uh certain acts have certain themes that would so, be cool yeah. yeah yeah i i'd like that a lot all i know is that <clears throat> as many people as can fit please add me to origin <laughs> so that i can get that <laughs> alliance loot every every week oh, or yes. every month <laughs> For sure, I think I'll be playing. A, so, is there <laughs> a cap on five still? Is it was that the yeah? That the it's five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's five. But I think I think it kind of like populates with like your most active five. So I think if you've got like more mm. active people on your friends list and um, yeah, things like that, so it should always be pretty pretty good. So I need five people that are gonna play the heck out of Anthem when it comes out. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex and I got you, man. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, one other thing I wanted to discuss, they had the AMAAAA, and uh, this kind of busted the microtransaction misconception. So pre-launch, they were mm -hmm. talking about, oh my God, $20 emotes and all that stuff. And I, I was kind of like, hey, that's like really being sensationalist because they've said how they're going to handle microtransactions. So yeah. basically, they're also trying to plan out a way that you can earn them in a reasonable amount of time. So not only are mm. they allowing you a payment option, they're also going to be offering you a way to just play the game and earn it without making it too farmy. Now, I know you've probably yeah. heard every show talk about this game, but it's another EA product, so it's important to bring up. But Apex Legends seems mm -hmm. to have sort of found that sweet spot where you earn uh, in-game currency for leveling up and such. How mm. do you feel about the, the microtransaction path going forward, Eric's? How are you feeling about it? I mean, I mean, things like I, I've, I've always been for me, like someone, I've always been, um, when it comes to microtransactions, I've been like, I'm completely fine if it's just cosmetic. Like I've always been completely against like selling power, but I'm like, if you want to sell like a hat for someone or a cape or like some fancy pants, I don't really care because <laughs> as long as it doesn't affect your power, like, that really doesn't matter, right? But the fact, but then to take the way that Anthem is handling it is even better because you know, in some games, like I, I always use MMOs as an example, like Guild Wars, they've got like a cash shop and they have stuff that you can physically buy from there um and you know obviously if you don't want to spend money then you can do other stuff in game whereas in anthem it's like you don't even have to ever spend a penny because you can of course earn it all in game so i think that is oh that's the ultimate mtx model right it's like let people like have things that people can buy that don't offer power they're just cosmetic but then also for people that don't want to buy them let them earn it in game so mm. then it literally means if you like because i can understand the you know they're especially when you factor in they're giving away all this stuff for free afterwards like there are reasons there you know there are business reasons it's always quite hard to like have these conversations sometimes but it's like ultimately as much as we love games you know games yeah. are still a business right they still need to like turn a profit exactly. but if they if they can do that through like selling cosmetics and stuff because like you know i'm someone that i'll perfectly i'll happily go in and be like yo that armor suit is crazy for my colossus <laughs> i'm buying that day one right just so i can mm -hmm. wear it but mm -hmm. I think it's also, but I appreciate from different different uh, walks of, you know, whatnot. I think it's important to have that accessibility. So the model, the way they describe it right now, I think is, I, I, it sounds great. Yeah, I like it too. How do you feel about it, Dantex? I've always not minded uh, 
vanity items in the in a game for mm. microtransactions. Like, I guess th- what people are saying is that look, we're paying full price. Why should we pay for cosmetics and stuff? And well, 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 well look, uh, if you want this game to be serviced for free for years to come, mm-hmm. there needs to be an income. There needs to be mm-hmm. some way for them to. I mean, how can you, how can you explain to your board of directors that? Um, this is like millions of dollars of resources that we need to continue to surface this game is viable without some source of income. So for, I, I, I personally love the idea that these items can be easily gotten in game. And from what mm-hmm. we've seen, it doesn't seem too difficult. Like uh, there was a few clips I had posted where we'd actually killed an enemy and gotten some coin from that. So yeah. it feels, yeah, it feels like it's not just the Alliance system that gets, gives you coins. So if you take a look at Apex Legends, you seem to earn cosmetics as a reasonable pace, at least early mm-hmm. on, and that's a free-to-play game. We can only imagine how they've tuned Anthem. We don't know for sure, but if there is uh, the $60 upfront cost, you can expect the cosmetics to at least be doled out in a reasonable pace. Mm-hmm. That's what I think anyway. Mm-hmm. So I actually don't mind microtransactions at all. I don't want to see them involving power, like Eric said. But they can't. If it's just... Absolutely. Yeah. Can't. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. If it's just cosmetics and vanity, um, and the vanity system is so damn generous right now in a, mm-hmm. in a, at its base form, you can select any color from any of the color wheels. Um, mm-hmm. most of, most of the um, like the rubber, the steels, and and and, and all of the uh, what, are, what would you call them? Materials uh, or surface materials. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. surface materials are there, and you start with some basics. I mean, you don't start with all of the like the entry animations and yeah. such, but you start with enough. So. Mm-hmm. Texture, what about you, I Dexter, think, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a really, really good system. And, and to your point, you said that they need to pay for this somehow. Yes, they get their $60 base purchase, of course. But beyond that, you're not really paying for anything else. So this is only cosmetic. And that's the only way that they're going to get ancillary revenue, right? And that is important mm-hmm. to a big business like this. And I, I think yeah. people are loosening up because I think developers skewed too far in one direction at one point, obviously. And now Fortnite kind of just said, okay, so we have these cosmetics and you can just buy them if you want or just don't. Just play with the default skin. And mm-hmm. they also like allow you to earn them through in-game, in-game challenges, basically. And, and they did a good job of finding a, a, a good spot. And I think EA is sort of refining it after getting beaten up. But I want to open this mm. one to chat. So basically, if you're on twitch.tv slash the Destin channel, uh, hit at the Destin channel and leave a comment about how you feel about the microtransaction system. And we will address your questions at the end of the show. Uh, I have chat open mm. here, so I will collect those as we go. And if you're watching the VOD later, like tomorrow when it releases, we can also address those potentially on the next episode. But we might be talking mm-hmm. about <laughs> we might be talking about the full release. But we want to make sure yeah. that it's open for everybody, of course. Moving on, uh, here here was an interesting note that I saw from the AMA uh, raid level content in the first year uh, from Ben Irving. So, what do you mm-hmm. guys think raid level content means? Is this just grandmaster difficulty, or do you think he's referencing some sort of activity? Uh, we'll start with Dantix. <laughs> I actually think it's people, the amount of players that you can have within. I I think it's going to open up with Cataclysm. I think that's where they're going to kind of test the waters. I'm not sure if that means that there'll be some kind of world level uh, objective where it'll be the whole server needs to, or the whole of the world needs to kill a certain amount of targets and that will unlock some kind of reward. I'm not sure if that's what they mean. That would be cool. But I think... Yeah, that would be real cool um, if that's what the Cataclysm was. And that's what I kind of have suspicions that it will be. Um, but with raid level content, I think that just simply means they're considering potentially having more than four people in a stronghold or in something along those lines. That so would I'm be sure really, really content. fun. Because mm-hmm. Division 2, we're going to talk about the sort of cross cross narrative there. And Division 2 actually has eight player raids coming up. So yeah. with four mm-hmm. player teams, what if we had eight player teams suddenly? That would be absolutely exciting to me. Mm-hmm. For what, sure. What about you, Eric? How do you feel? What do you feel this raid-like activity is? Raid-level content. So I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I feel like um, I mean, player player increase would definitely be like a, a welcome thing because I mean, obviously that would be that would be also is kind of what you um sort of come to expect with with raid kind of content. But I think outside of that, raids are also 
in kind of nature are always always have like an, an extra layer of complexity right there's always an mm-hmm. element of puzzle solving yeah. to them element of mm-hmm. um i think i think it's important to see though because i mean the one thing that ben actually said was like the reason they've referred to it as sort of like raid like content they didn't want to actually call it a raid is because raids as we know them there's kind of that predetermined formula right you kind of go in you you expect like x number of bosses x number of encounters a particular way mm-hmm. to sort of do things so i think they want to they don't want to sort of like fit that framework but i think they appreciate what raids offer so i think you know when you factor in that a stronghold sure when you play like grandmaster one you need to kind of work as a team but ultimately you shoot stuff till it's dead there aren't really many mechanics you really need to worry about right whereas Mm -hmm. i think when it comes to actually raid content it's about some encounters you can't just brute force through you have to be like there's Mm -hmm. something that needs to be done here um so i'm hoping that it also means and also partly you know when they when they did in the most uh in the most recent trailer when they had the one talking about cataclysms and they said that with the cataclysm obviously on top of the weather and the enemies you also have mysteries to solve so i'm hoping they lean into that aspect of it like there'll be some kind of i mean there's so many exciting things you could do with like the shape of relics and mm-hmm. like what shapers have done with the world mm-hmm. you could have some like really abstract encounters with some interesting like white mechanics and stuff so yeah i think i think it would i think what they'd essentially like to do based on the way they've spoken about it would be like take the spirit of a raid but maybe put it in something that's a little less kind of conventional kind of contained mm. like you don't just go into a dungeon it could take place to kind of to what sort of Dante said like out in the open mm. world there could be like yeah. different things you do but yeah with more people so that would be really yeah. cool yeah Here, here's the quote i tweeted it out from their trailer on endgame it actually says our most ambitious and challenging content will come to anthem in the form of cataclysms this mm. uh, time limited world events that cause physical manifestations to occur, extreme weather, incursions of dangerous hostile enemies, and new mysteries to solve. So I'm guessing that's going to mm. be their avenue to deliver this high level challenge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe ahead, there's some kind of exploration aspect to it in the cool. in the free play. Um, it might not just be involved around killing certain enemies. Which would be really cool. I, like I, I want to see free play really open up, and I think Cataclysm will do that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, sense. I mean, what if you took it one stage further? Like, what if like in order for to kind of complete the raid activity, so to speak, you have to almost like cancel out the cataclysms like it's happening like and it obviously oh. emanates from some kind of like shape of storm and suddenly you know, mm. the whole world is like breaking down like you know let's just say they've got like a firewall and everything's like burning so like you have to kind of go to a part of the world and do like an objective go to another part and like deal with these enemies that have been coming through a portal and then like gradually you're working through different objectives throughout the world imagine that like suddenly you take mm. a raid but you then spread the raid across the entire world map yeah, I think yeah, that like, would be real cool. Yo, what the hell? And if I if I like <laughs> some crazy boss and then suddenly the, the cataclysm is closed and then it goes away and it's like, all right, next, uh, you know, that could yeah. be interesting. That would be. And really then if you can, and then if you combine that with the interesting effects that you could have on raid bosses, like I remember mm. uh, in World of Warcraft, like WoW had a uh, molten core and there was one enemy. I can't remember the enemy exactly. You guys might remember, but it set one of your uh, um, allies to explode after a certain amount of time. And if they oh, stayed yeah, around yeah, you, yeah, yeah. they would wipe your team. So you'd have to have one guy running off. But in Anthem, they would have to jump in the air, fly away from you and not explode your team. Like stuff like that would be really cool. Mm. Definitely. Uh, some of the other AMA stuff. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to like look at all my notes and everything. Uh, right. Save files are going to be able to go next gen. That's really, really exciting. So it means if you're mm-hmm. playing on console and new consoles are released, yes, you're going to be able to carry those over. What else do we have here? Uh, potentially in the future, you're going to be able to choose different ultimates. That's a little bit of a customization mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. What else do I have here? No loadout change in the field. And the reason for that was because they didn't want you setting your team aside and making them wait for you while you're sort of messing with your gear. This is one I actually disagree with. Destiny's allowed players to do this. And I understand the design philosophy of not wanting that to happen. But if you load in with something incorrect, incorrectly equipped and right now with a little bit how the ui is you i've accidentally equipped stuff and then i go into battle i'm like all right i guess Mm. i'll just figure out two sniper rifles this round (laughs) you know and (laughs) yeah yeah and and, and i think there should be a little bit more flexibility there but maybe we'll see later how do you guys feel about are you like oh yeah that's totally fine or do you think uh, something different uh, look uh, the reason i think the reason for it is pretty solid but i do agree with your point as well so i'll start with the reason for it it's obviously so you can stay mobile you don't stop you don't change your loadouts you don't equip Mm -hmm. a mob killing build and then switch to a boss killing build right when you hit that boss right it's it's trying to get your team tactical and Mm -hmm. coercive um but i do agree with you i think there needs to be some kind of like loadout screen 
prior to entering the match or there needs to be the forge doesn't shouldn't be a separate or two separate load screens between that and the actual mission it kind of like makes it so if yeah. you make a mistake you can't check it or you can't test out loadouts it is yeah so rx what about you what do you think yeah i mean i like again i, I can completely sort of i can appreciate like both sides of it like it is you know on, on one side from like a you know like a destiny or a division side of things it's, it's quite cool being able to be like oh you know i, I actually i realized this isn't working here like for example I was, I was playing division the weekend i took a shotgun and mm. it was like this isn't working right now so then you know once you're mm. out of combat you can change from it but I can appreciate, you know, the nature of Anthem kind of keeping you mobile. So maybe what they could do with that is like, you look at it from sort of like a Monster Hunter system. Like Monster Hunter is a game very similar to Anthem in that respect, whereby in previous games prior to World, you would always, when you go out on a quest, you can't change your equipment. You know, the sword that you have, that's that's what you've got until you go back, right? In World, mm-hmm. they made one quality of life change, whereby there's a base camp where you can go in, you can change your equipment, but you have mm-hmm. to go back to base camp. So maybe the way just to, just to streamline this would literally be like when you stand outside Fort Tarsus on that platform or when you're on one of the striders, Maybe when you mm. stand on one of those, you can just quickly rechange your loadout without having to go all the way back. Mm-hmm. And then it yeah. still means that if you're in the middle of a mission, if you wanted to do it, you'd have to go and fly all the way back. Yeah. Which you could technically do. And obviously, mm-hmm. it, they wouldn't necessarily want to encourage it. But at least it means that, like, because, you know, I, I've done the same. I mean, it was, it was also kind of from like a video mm. point of view when I was out trying to test different abilities. Like, all right, mm. let me go out and use my, my Venom Spitter for like two minutes. Like, okay, back to Fort Tarsus, back, back to the loading screen, yeah. back to the Forge. Like, whoo. Yeah. So maybe there's a maybe yeah, there's a happy you. medium. I, I definitely I definitely agree that in missions we should be like, yo, you've committed to it, run through, just be mobile, go. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe just like a streamlined system to swap before without having to kind of go all the way back. Yeah, mm. yeah. At least those base abilities. I do like the idea of a screen popping up saying these are the weapons you have selected. Here's the abilities you have selected. That's a really good idea, mm. Dantex. Just mm. to kind of like, are yeah. you sure this is what you want? Like a save or yeah, don't yeah, save? Because yeah. that was another thing yep. that's confusing. You got to kind of like double click on the character that you want to select before you go out. And then sometimes it would take a little while to load up the javelin that you're you're gearing mm. up. So so yeah, just sort of some yep. confirmation. Uh, I think would be pretty yeah. yeah. bad. And the, and the other way that would be great is uh, actually coordinating with your team, what skills you have, what weapons you have, making sure you have enough mm. primers, detonators, all that stuff. And th- that was one of the concerns that um, someone had on my Discord actually was that the, it's meant to be this collaborative experience that you coordinate, yet you, you're not quite sure what your, your friends have at the start. So Yeah, especially yeah. with no text chat, which they've been pretty transparent about. They said that, but uh, I still yeah. want it. I know you've been transparent about it, but please make it happen anyway. Uh, uh, I 100% want it. Yeah, yeah. It needs absolutely. to be there. Um, a- another one that uh, actually I don't like is, uh, but they are going to look at it for after launch, but no unique boss loot at launch. I think that's a pretty big yeah. miss for a launch piece mm-hmm. of content, but I'm guessing we're going to have a pretty robust story to, to go through with our friends. Uh, how do you feel about no unique yeah. boss loot? I, I think it's a miss. I think that's something they definitely should have looked at design wise and sort of some sort of mm. drop screen for the bosses. Uh, how do you mm. feel, Eric? Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I mean, like, you know, I, as you know, as someone that plays like a lot of these kind of these kind of games anyway, like one of the nice things, you know, or again coming from like a monster point of view, like it's nice to have like something that you if you wear it, if you're using it, someone can look at you and be like, yo, I know what you've done. Like if you know, man, imagine if like if there was a like a cosmetic set linked to like mm. the um uh, the scorpion <laughs> yeah exactly it's funny he's that sport yeah, yeah. Or and like and you wear it and like even if it was just like you know like a mess llama but it's got like some scales on it and then you could look at you and be like oh yo you've obviously farmed that tyrant queen to get all like all the parts you need like, i think mm. i think that's really important because and again it doesn't it doesn't always have to be um power related it could just be cosmetic and that's something that can keep people grinding i mean imagine if you get to end game and you got a fully masterwork spec build, but you're like, all right, you know, I want to have that, like, I want to have the Tyrant Queen look to my character, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. grind it, like, back to back. It gives you a different reason to go back into the Stronghold. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a, and also that you could also apply that to, like, world bosses, right? Like, you go out, and there could be something that, like, really rare drop from, like, an, an Ancient Ash Titan. Mm-hmm. I think those kind of things in these games are really important. So I think that, if they can get that in soon, that would be really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. I think with the Monster Hunter uh, takeaway that you just mentioned with the cosmetics, I reckon mm-hmm. that's 100% something they should do. If there's a really a difficult boss at the end of the Stronghold for all of the Strongholds moving forward, I think they all should have a cosmetic set. That being said, yeah. uh, I'm not sure I agree with them having a unique uh, gear piece or item piece just because yeah. I think that would make it so people just have to farm the same content over and over. They're almost forced to for a piece mm-hmm. that they want. And I'm not really for that, but definitely for cosmetic, they should be. I want to see someone fully decked out in in like a giant scorpion outfit when they're when they're Colossus, you know. Like I want to see yes. that kind of thing. 
<laughs> yeah, like this weird, weird bug-like sort of insectoid yeah. thing where you've ripped off yeah. pieces of, of the enemy and put them on. Imagine Destiny, that. Yeah. Destiny did a really good job of, with that in Destiny 1 when you did the raids. And I, I would mm. love to see <clears> that continue here. And and if Destiny is able to include weapons like uh, Grass and Malak back in the day, you know, for running mm. one piece of content, I, I think it's definitely worth adding that. To, to a piece of content like this because you're going to be rerunning these anyway because they're tying a lot of the masterworks to mm. to these events. So so I, mm. I would be okay with weapons also. So, some other stuff yeah. going forward. Uh, PS4 controllers not natively supported. And uh, mm. stats plan to be added to post screen. So we, we're kind of getting mm. our wish, Dantix, right off the bat that we're going to be able to that brag was, to our friends. <laughs> that was actually yeah. the quest, my question that he answered. Oh yeah. Looking at there. So yeah, yeah. I was really happy about that one. Um, Chad Robinson replied to me there and I was, uh, I was feeling, uh, I was feeling that, that, that was something I really wanted the post stat screen. Mm. I really wanted that. So, uh, basically now what we get for people who haven't played it is like uh, a few medals mm -hmm. yet. We don't have any way to kind of see what those medals represented without knowing mm -hmm. prior. You, if it's a kill medal, for example, you can't see exactly how many kills you got. And I feel like, a big competitive element to these kind of co-op games is just doing better than your friends. And I personally mm -hmm. want those bragging rights, or I personally want to see where I can improve. If I, if I see that I've, I've dropped 10 times during a match, I'll be like, Oh God, my friend's got 10 <laughs> revives. I'm so bad at this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Eric's, how do yeah. you feel about it? I, I think it's, it's a good thing. Obviously any additional thing is always good, but are you happy that yeah, post, yeah. post stats I mean are there? I think it's always nice to have that stuff. I mean, I, I feel like there's there's always there's it'll be interesting to see what they choose to do. Like I've seen a lot of games in more recent times avoid things like overall damage dealt or like number of times died because like you often find that if you're in a pickup group, then someone's like, "Hey, look at you! Why why have you only done like 20k damage? We've all done 500k." Yeah, yeah. So I'll be interested to see what they choose. Like you know, obviously every like I you know someone that you know I mean you did the same we were talking about last week where you went out trying to get the biggest number you can on the devastator. So obviously yeah. you want to know how much you've done. But yeah, mm. I've seen quite a few games recently, like even even like Monster Hunter again, like they in well they added some kind of like a few post reward uh, stats, but there was never anything like damage dealt because they didn't want people to be like you know, why are you not pulling your weight? So I feel mm -hmm. like if they were going to do it, they might just kind of like pull out things that are, you know, it, it could just be things like enemy enemies killed or like weak points hit or they, they probably like pull out some of those more PVE focused things. So you can mm -hmm. still get an idea, but probably doesn't like promote that kind of I'm better than you sort of dialogue. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that Devastator, they're looking at it very <laughs> <Yeah>. closely <laughs> and it sounds well, like <laughs> they're okay with muster means. point. They're okay with muster point. <laughs> But they don't like the devastator. So yeah, we're I tried, say, I tried oh. to, I tried to stir him up, stir him up. Of course, I replied to Ben. I was, I was like, I, I, was like, I think, one. I think, I think you mean the dead eye. The dead eye, the dead eye definitely needs to be nerfed. But the, the devastator, <laughs> no, that, that, there's nothing to see there. Don't worry, it's fine. It's if totally anything, bad. I think it needs a buff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was that powerful. Like getting the twenty four thousand no. dips. Like maybe they crunched some numbers yeah. and realized by end game with some of the the muster point uh, randomization. Maybe it, mm. it would accelerate the damage too much, but yeah. leave, leave my sniper alone. I yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they could just make it one one shot instead or something, you know, one ammo. That would mm -hmm. then it'd be fine, right? Yeah. Um yeah. and the fact that you have two guns, if it was only if it was only one, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it would be completely balanced, right? Because I mean, how do you get through the, the normal content? Right? You, you just yeah. Anyway, if they yeah. want to balance it, just make it so that only only the Colossus can use the Devastator. It's fine. No, <laughs> it's fine. no. <laughs> that, that's yeah. ball. Don't just do give, that. It to, give it to more of our heavy weapons. I'll have a heavy sniper, a Gatling gun, a grenade launcher, and then you guys can run around with your pistols. That so, thing has so, to have a lot of kick. There's yeah. no way anyone else can hold that. <laughs> exactly, right? So, so our suggestions are make it only for Colossus and let it only have one round of ammunition. Okay. Yeah, so I like, and I can I make it so you charge up for like ten minutes. You have to lie there, and then eventually, like you charge up, and then you're like, "All right, the shot's ready." You're like, boom. They could do that. They could just make the charge time a little bit longer on it, and I think that would mm, sort yeah. of sort of uh, make yeah. it a little bit more in that vein. But don't make the reload time longer, please. No more long yeah. reload times on anything. Yeah, I yeah. just saw a masterwork today for the um, storm. It was about giving more damage to lightning attacks and yeah. also better status oh, yeah. effect. But when you killed a target with a sniper, mm -hmm. you got 60% more uh, lightning damage. Ooh. So you need to kill a target with a sniper 
without the devastator i'm not sure how this is gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully, hopefully they keep tweaking those weapons in a good yeah. way uh what else we got uh yeah mark dara said cosmetics are earnable in a reasonable amount of time spectator cam may be added when you're down not maybe mr mark dara please add us anything for yeah. once you're down yeah. in in uh anthem uh story missions have matchmaking options so that is something in case you didn't know and more open world activities over time this this one i really really like because Clearly, they're listening. I mean, all there's more than this, by the way. There was way more than this in the AMA. These are the ones that really stuck out to me. Um, there's yep. going to be more open world activities over time, which means that world is going to continue to evolve, and that is that is a good thing. Mm. How do you feel about it, Alex? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely. I think I think it's uh, you know, I mean, because I, I think we said we touched on it like the previous week, where like it would be nice to have slightly like a few more things going on in free play anyway. Because right now, like when you get to end game, I feel like if you want to have a more structured experience, like if you're going after something, you'll be diving into like missions or contracts or strongholds. It's like although you can get great loot from free play, like right now you kind of just load into it and you sort of like float around aimlessly. It's kind of why I, before I said like one of the things I want to see is an actual um, global kind of waypoint to saying there's a world event happening over in the north right so you know where to go mm -hmm. um so i feel like if you just have more events going on it just means you'll get to the point where the world is like more populated there's always stuff kind of going on uh and also you know it, admittedly we only played a few in the, a few in the in the, the demo and whatnot but even in the demo there were you know it was after roaming around like free play for like an hour you're already kind of doing the same activities over and over again so anything to kind of deepen that pool um 100 yeah mm -hmm. mm. yep real quick did you guys see the launch trailer Yes. The, is, this yes, is the one with the people yes, walking yes. towards the javelins, right? Yes. And like they yes, each, yes, each yes, sort yes, of yes. pick their own javelin that they identify with oh, and yes. they show a cutscene. That trailer was hype as fuck. It was really, really so good. good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's that probably was so good. The, the reason I loved it in particular is because it teased glimpses at the store of the story and what we're going to be experiencing mm. there. It, mm. it seems like it actually used assets from in the game. Definitely. There's probably like some color correction on the gameplay to make it a little more stylish. Yeah, the yeah. UI is lightened, but uh, it did a good job of sort of capturing the action that we're going to experience while teasing a little yes. bit of what we're going to yes. like. So, so Dantix, you watched it. What did you like about it so much? What, why did it get you hyped? Well, like you said, the story, I liked seeing that the, uh, there was more to the story than we initially had mm. seen. I don't want to yeah. see too much. I don't want to spoil it, mm -hmm. but this was just enough. This was just enough to get me hyped. Also the fact that it kind of showed the virtue of each javelin as well. Like it, yeah. it, it, they had their own yeah. pace. It was like a, a story in itself. And then third, I just wanted this to be made into a movie and go look at yeah. the top <laughs> comment on 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 uh youtube right now for that trailer and you'll see that everybody wants that yeah. i didn't get my mass yeah. effect movie that was <laughs> being made and then got shelved so i want this <laughs> yeah that would yeah. be pretty cool what about you eric what was your favorite favorite piece of it what what did it uh inspire in your imagination yeah i mean i, mean, I think i think it's a similar sort of thing to uh, dantix i mean definitely definitely the story because like story is one of those things where like i i definitely like you know it's it's interesting because having played a lot of these types of games before like story you know, I mean, we've got Destiny, who's like got a ton of story, but it's in lore, so you kind of lose a lot of it in the game. Um, but to think that like, we've got a game like this that we're going to be able to play and you know do all the do all the kind of looter shooter aspects that we love, but we're actually hopefully going to have a really cool, rich story. I'm super excited for that. Um, and just in general, just like the trailer as a whole, like I love it whenever whenever there's a game that you're super hyped for and they finally drop the launch trailer. Like you have like all the cool trailers up until up until launch, like they focus on gameplay or story and stuff. When they drop the launch trailer, you're like, yo, I know this is going to be hype. You just sit back and you're like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to watch that three times back to back because it was that good. <laughs> yeah. It's like the culmination yeah. of all their work. And they try and like give you a hint of all the different aspects that you're going to experience. Mm. And, and for me, getting to see just how much care they're going to put into the storytelling, because that's something mm. we haven't gotten a great impression of. We did one, we did one quest line. I don't even think it was main quest. It could have been main quest. It could have just been a side mission for mm -hmm. it was Matthias, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah 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 so he split into three and then they brought him back together and well spoilers if you didn't play the demo sorry everybody what? but um yeah <laughs> yeah that uh, was a yeah it could have been the arcanist quest line mm -hmm. because there is a three uh faction related yeah, quest right. uh, so we can't be sure that it was part of the story yeah we mm -hmm. we don't know so that was a tease yeah. uh we're gonna go mm -hmm. into our, our last subject but two things real quick uh We'll start prepping questions now. So again, hit at the Destin channel in chat. I saw some, please repost them and we'll get to those at the end of the show. Make sure they're questions so, and we'll get there. Uh, 
Grandmaster difficulty two and three I had posted in the run of show. No Grandmaster two and three at launch, but why, Dad? And <laughs> these guys <laughs> were kind enough to point out that uh, Ben Irving had actually corrected that and said they were <laughs> considering not having them at launch, and they actually are going to be able to have that. So thankfully, if you've heard that, it turns out that they are going to have it. The, the communication issue, though, has been really, really tricky for me because unless you have mm. like a feed and it's just – what these guys have been tweeting, it's really hard to yeah. keep up with what is news and what isn't. And uh, yeah. yeah, have you guys found that? Like, how are you managing to keep up with all these details as they come out? So I have, um, I, I do this for like all the main games that I kind of cover on the channel. I have like yeah. on TweetDeck, I've got a Twitter list and like my Anthem one has got just like Anthem devs in, like all official yeah. um, Anthem people. And then obviously I have the same for Destiny, for Division, for Monster Hunter. Yeah. So I can then just open up TweetDeck and like I can see a feed of all that. I mean, sometimes it's not on Twitter. Sometimes this stuff happens in like the Reddit or the Discord. And so, yeah. you know, there there will still be stuff that like I, I miss. But like generally speaking, the the Twitter thing is like uh, I catch most things. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I do. That's smart. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do, because I don't want to get. I can scooped. link you my list as well if you want it. Yeah, sure. I'll take it. Dan, yeah. do you do the same thing? Ah, uh, yeah, I use I use the tweet deck. All right. <laughs> I'm good. I'm an it's old man. I'm an old man. <laughs> I, I still have RSS feeds from when I used to do a new show back in the day. <laughs> nice. Don't don't get me wrong. I still love just scrolling Twitter like a regular young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, next topic, the, the last topic of the show is basically Anthem versus Destiny versus Division, all living in harmony somehow. We have all of these games sort of launching in the same window. Mm -hmm. Anthem has this nice little window of the 15th. It's going up against uh, Far Cry, uh, Crackdown, Jump Force. There's a lot of really, really exciting games coming out within that window. I think it carves out in the RPG genre, though, a perfect space where we're going to have two to three weeks of uninterrupted bliss before the Destiny yeah. content launches in March. And then we're going to have Division later in March mm -hmm. to also try out mm -hmm. if you're into Division. Uh, how do you guys feel about this launch window? I feel like it's a really good spot for Anthem. What do you think, Eric's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think it is great. I mean, like, you know, it is obviously, you know, there are a lot of other games happening this week, but like in terms of in this space, um, then obviously, you know, the division beta's just finished. So obviously, you know, they're they're kind of wrapped up on that front. So it is, as you said, like it is hopefully going to be a good like two three weeks of just like clear anthem time, you know, sinking into it. And I really do hope as well, like you know, knowing now, uh, at least you know, we know we know kind of like what to expect from the end game at launch. We obviously know we have the roadmap, but the roadmap is sort of dated for like March 2019. So I would yeah. I would be willing to bet we'll have like a good few weeks of you know potentially maybe even a whole month of playing the game first, and then obviously it might come towards the tail end of March. That's what I think. So yeah, I, I I'm hoping. I mean, it's, it's kind of wishful thinking, and I know it never works out this way, but I'm kind of mm -hmm. hoping they'll almost like live in harmony. Like Anthem will kind of everyone will sort of get to end game, and they'll they'll be sort of sitting waiting, thinking, all right, what's next? Yeah. Then Division can come up for a little bit. People can hop in that for a bit, and then obviously Anthem will be like, hey, here's our here's our Echoes of Reality. It's kicking off. Like, okay, cool. Let me mm -hmm. jump back in. And then I'm hoping they'll they'll kind of like wave between each mm. other. Um, but no, but win window wise, it's great. Like I think it's it's like it's nice to have. I love having these games at the beginning of the year because you know normally go back kind of two or three years and like you know January February used to be quite quiet for gaming, right? And now mm. like to have a have a looter shooter that will sink hundreds thousands of hours into. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, work has been absolutely insane looking towards the 15th. I'm going to have a very busy week next week at IGN <laughs> during my main job, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, Dantix, how do you feel about this rollout of, of these three big games? I, yeah, I'm the same as uh, Alex here. I think that it'll there'll be a nice little uh, bell curve with the play count with those three games. I think it'll be whoever's got the newest content or the most exciting content at that given time mm -hmm. will probably have majority because a lot of these games fit, you know, a similar niche, but there are the differences. Mm -hmm. I think like we mentioned in the previous episode, there are the differences that do separate them. So they will have their, their, their fans, their diehard fans. That's what they're going to be playing throughout the year. Uh, and then they'll have the people that will gladly jump between them. And I think that's what will mm -hmm. fit between the curve. Like Eric said, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to play sensationalist. I'm going to play that part <laughs> for a second. Uh, Destiny needs to do some stuff with their quest structure, I think. And if it's another mm. go shoot a whole bunch of different stuff without a lot of variety or storytelling, 
uh, Anthem's definitely going to be pulling me in because Bioware is one of my favorite storytellers. Uh, mm -hmm. Division, I played the private demo. I streamed it a little bit on the channel. And uh, my main concern there is like, this is basically the game. I don't want to spend 10 hours leveling up my character to experience this content and then have to do it again when the game launches. So, so that one I just kind of pumped the brakes on. And also I can't fly. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not a flying mech robot man that could destroy everything. Yeah. And, uh, and then PVP wise, uh, Apex Legends has been feeding my desire for an excellent PVP game lately. And uh, I've just been loving that. Do you guys feel that at all? Like, are you leaning one way or another? Because for me, yeah, I I'm think... 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Damn I'm 100 like I I'm I I played all 3 and I just enjoy Anthem more. But that's yeah. my personal opinion. I know others obviously have their, their their preferences and I can see why the others would be would be good, but me personally I love the storytelling of BioWare games and I always have and I started my channel on, on BioWare games and that's the reason why uh it it really the other two don't really matter to me as much. Uh and like you said Apex Legends is kind of feeding that that PVP kind of itch for me. Mm -hmm. And then I have this co-op itch that I'm not quite scratching yet. And my, me and my friends are sitting there waiting for the 15th or the 16th for me. I'm uh, sitting there waiting like, come on, we want to play, we want to play. And everyone's yeah. super yeah. excited. And then I just, yeah, I don't know. I, we need to get into yeah. it now. It's really fun. <laughs> Eric, you going to take one so, side or are you going to play the Harmony, no. Harmony card? <laughs> so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in the it's funny because I was, I was actually kind of, I had this question because I, I was streaming Division at the weekend and like a lot of people came in there like, I've only got time for one of these games, Anthem or, or Division. It's like, yeah. it's such a whole, I, I said, because it's such mm. a whole question to answer because like there's there's different um there's things that i love about both of them right i was sitting there trying to sort of like work it out it's like for me like division two like it's a, it's a great game and it you know i really enjoy it and i, I know what i like it like about it but the thing yeah. is with division two like they've got a load of new stuff but obviously that's the stuff that i won't get to see until the game comes out so fundamentally it's just like i, I already know that i like the game right whereas anthem yeah. is like the kind of like the shiny, the shiny new thing is like you know i've never seen this before and i love robots i love flying around things like that right so like yeah. There's, it already ticks that box. But then someone made a really good point. They were like, all right, you know what? Um, it's kind of what we touched on before. Like Anthem being the ability game first and weapons like are supplementary. Mm -hmm. Like Division is is the inverse, right? Division is a game, again, about weapons. Like the team put so much mm -hmm. hard work into like how the weapons feel in that game. And abilities mm -hmm. are much slower to regen. So obviously it is mm -hmm. a gun game first with ability second. And obviously Division has PvP. So if you like the looter shooter genre, but pvp is maybe where you want to gravitate more towards then maybe you would gravitate more towards division because it'll give you that fix and obviously mm -hmm. ultimately you can go and fight people whereas yeah. if you're like you know what i'm just more in for the story i'm more in for like the pve aspect i'm more in for like the fantasy like you know all that kind of stuff like that then maybe you go more to anthem but yeah for me it's, it's hard like i i love all the games um obviously you know anthem is a new one but everything i've played up until now i just i've, I've loved it and you know i hope it's just as good if not better mm -hmm. when i get the full game um so yeah i'm definitely going to try and straddle the line between all of them but i'm mm -hmm. super excited for anthem though Can't oh wait. yeah i want to fly around me too absolutely i never thought in a million years i would be saying like anthem is probably going to be my pick but if destiny doesn't bring back that's that storytelling that they have mm -hmm. uh usually crafted with their their content drops then i'm just gonna be like is this really just a grind for guns because that grind will be there forever like i'm not missing mm -hmm. anything yeah. if i'm not doing that grind it'll just be there to access whenever so anthem however you know, has this huge story that i could mm -hmm. experience what are you gonna say eric mm -hmm. No, I was just, I was just saying with, yeah, with Destiny, I know what I mean. It's, it's, it's like, I'm almost, I, I, yeah, like Destiny's always going to have a place in my heart and I'm always going to like, every time there's a new update, I'll always come back to it. But I almost feel like for Destiny, I'm more interested to see what happens after these next two scheduled updates are done. Like, you know, the, this is the stuff they laid out obviously in their kind of pre-partnership with Activision stuff. I'm, I'm interested to see what they will do post that so yes. potentially whether whether that becomes destiny 3 whether that becomes i don't know a free to play destiny who knows right but mm. i think i think for me like I'll, I'll always dip back in but i feel like the that kind of full-on hook mm. might take a little bit longer to to get there so in the interim hey we're gonna have all these games to juggle and, and also yeah. like i mean knowing as well anthem and division have both said they've got like a year uh, like a full year of free dlc so mm. throughout the year there'll be reason to return to both games so you know for sure exactly right for sure. I think yeah. Anthem will actually kick uh, Division into gear in terms of better content. I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be like, oh, there's another competitor in this market. Yeah. We better start. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think they're all going to... The they're all sort of going to level out, I think. Like, at the end of the day, mm. they're still... We're, like, I'm still going to play Destiny. I'm still going to check out Division. <laughs> but, like, mm. if the grind of flying around in a robot suit is more fun, that might get a little bit more of my time than, like, mm -hmm. uh, one of the gun quest lines in Destiny, for example. So yeah. we'll just see. We'll see. And I think that's what's going to happen with a lot of players. They're event they're going to settle on the one that they end up liking. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And if this is a big topic, you know, there's always the potential 
that one of us could play uh, Division, one of us could play Destiny, one of us could play Anthem on the same stream, and see, oh, yeah. and you guys can see all the differences at once. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I think the other thing worth calling yeah. out as well is that is that um, the interesting thing with Division, obviously, this is their this is their second foray into this um, this genre. So obviously, you know, one of their big things they've been pushing this time is Endgame first. So obviously, you know, we we know like pre Anthem launch. So I'm, you know, again, irrespective, of, like I having known, you know, what's what's coming and whatnot, I'm still super excited and nothing has hindered that but we know obviously division like they had that same problem when the game came out their end game was lacking so then when they came to number two they're like they are building it with end game first and they have yeah. like raids they have all this stuff so it'll be quite interesting so i feel like that's one one kind of leg up they may have but again yeah. you know i'm not yeah i've never i know for me yeah it's just, it's a quite a simple thing i said it to my streaming chat i was like mm -hmm. i've never been one to compare games i'm just like i like all the different games yeah i'm gonna play them all i'm gonna have fun with them yeah. all so you gotta make your own yeah. choice if you wanna know which one to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I've always liked about you, Alex. Yeah. 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 I'm not trying to play the bait card or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But all those games are gonna be good. They all feed that need to level up and pa the power fantasy that I love. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm glad we have this market where there's so much choice. It's it's a great time. Oh, uh, we are spoiled yeah. for choice with games, and that's why we all need to stay positive, guys. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, a lot coming. There'll be something for you. There will be something for you out there. So, Moving yeah, on yeah. to chat questions. We do have some here. Gecko Statue asks, and this is a good one for you guys. Uh, do you feel the Interceptor's combo effect isn't as impactful as the other combo mm. effects? How do you feel, uh, Dantix? I think it is kind of like the, the, um, the Ranger's combo effect in that you don't really see it do anything, but it's doing something. Uh, mm. When I went back and looked through the footage, uh, I had an ice aura in a lot of cases with the interceptor during the Grandmaster One difficulty, mm -hmm. and that was spreading the frost around, and that really helped. And I didn't notice it. I thought I thought the storm was doing all of that. When in, when in reality, it was my aura. So I think it is actually really good, considering that you can then combo again off that with your melee. So I, I think it I think it is pretty good. It could mm. maybe visually have a buff because you don't really know that you've got it on a lot of the times in the middle of a fight. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. What were your ex? You know yeah. anything? Um, yeah. I mean, exactly. I think, I think it's one of those ones where it definitely has that, I, I guess kind of, as we sort of like discussed last week, it's sort of about uh, it's like it's placement in the team. I think it definitely has value, but yeah, it's just, it's just not as, as obvious, yeah. right? Like when the, when the storm of the Colossus kick off theirs, you know, either the element spreads or there's a hefty explosion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The intercept is almost more in line with the ranger because, like the rate, the ranger when it has its combo effects, like it just does a big deal of damage to a single target. But there's not like a big explosion; it just kind of happens. Um, mm. And same thing with the intercept, right? It carries that thing, and I guess it, I guess maybe it sort of matches the the, the theme for the character, right? Because it is the stealthy character, so it takes this this um you know this this aura and it runs with it wherever it needs to. So mm. I definitely agree that it would be nice if there was something slightly more showy that you, you know, so like if you're if you're high up and you're like a storm and you see your interceptor running around, maybe like a way to sort of see, oh yo, they're doing they're doing work there, because mm -hmm. um, mm. it could because mm. it could also be like especially if you're in a hectic battlefield and they're there and they've primed they primed enemy because they're meleeing them. But then you're there's so so much else going on the screen. Like if you're further away, trying to like look out for that combo, maybe you won't see it. So they could potentially maybe sort of do something to make it stand out more. But I think yeah, I think I think its versatility probably carries in the way that the interceptor, unlike most of the other ones, isn't bound to a particular area. You know, you could literally be like, there are two mobs, one here and one here. Like I'm gonna kick off a combo here and I'm gonna run and take it here. And like yeah, good point. So I think I think it's yeah. definitely gonna yeah. I, but I mean, all of this stuff is 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 difficult because like. We kind of sort of made all these assumptions based on like demo time, but I think once yeah. the full game comes out, we start hitting end game. Then we'll really yeah. start seeing like if there are any obvious weaknesses. There's yeah. so much we don't know, and the only knowledge mm. we have is from the events that we've gone to or mm -hmm. the demo build, right? So it's going to be yeah. interesting to see what the full game is like because we really haven't seen much, if any, of the the campaign narrative of what we're going to mm. be experiencing story wise. And uh, mostly we've just been doing missions, gameplay, and gear sets. So yeah. it's going to be really, really cool to see some of the end game content and such. And actually, we have a question from Kane of 2358. He says, uh, question, should bosses of strongholds on Grandmaster 123 have additional moves slash different patterns to change up gameplay uh, rather than just plus HP plus damage? Well, here's the thing. I, I haven't actually been able to experience a stronghold on different difficulty settings. I've only done them on one difficulty okay. setting. Uh, so between between like normal and hard, there's no change. But have you guys gotten a chance to try them on like Grandmaster One? So I've done Tyrant Mine on Grandmaster One, and yeah. it is just 
same it's just it's just it more more damage oh yeah mm. but i mean i do agree i mean to, to ask that question yeah i 100 percent. i would love to see new mechanics even if it's only like a few things again like i mean <laughs> i sound like a broken record but monster Hunter does a similar thing like when you if you go from like um high rank to like g rank like fundamentally the monsters behave the same but they'll probably have one or two new moves and it might not mm. be drastic but even if it was something like say the tyrant queen has like one extra like aoe move that you didn't see coming and then suddenly yeah. like i know she's got like an aoe web and just like ties down your whole team and then you're like oh I didn't see this. Mm, so, yeah. you know, just, just something to make you play a little bit differently. Mm, um, I yeah. will say that obviously by playing, having played through the Stronghold on Grandmaster, like you are definitely, teamwork is definitely 100% more important in those ones. Like mm, in hard yeah. mode, you can kind of just face, like face tank everything. Yeah. Whereas in Grandmaster, like you will be sticking together. So you, yeah. I guess in that respect, you play slightly differently, but yeah, fundamentally it is just yeah. more health, more damage. Speaking of sticking together, if you play uh, Grandmaster 1 Tyrant Mine and then got to the boss, uh, there's webbing. And mm. usually what wouldn't be a problem becomes a problem. There's a few moves that mm. you would have just completely ignored before. When she summons in enemies, that was just like, a, oh, hey, let's have a break kind of situation yeah. <laughs> in normal and hard. Mm. But in this, it, it, it actually seriously impacts it because you won't be able to kill them fast enough before she respawns. Mm. And then you have all these ads to deal with. And then you have all the webbing to deal with. If you get webbed, you're probably going to die because someone will just come in and kill you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can't face tank anymore, like you were saying, Eric. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a different fight. It feels completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, Destiny Raids, Destiny is probably the game I have the most time in. Uh, the Cake mm -hmm. and King Raid... The Taken King raid uh, where you fight Oryx at the end, they added like light eaters, for example, and you would have to kill the light eater yeah. knights before they were they ate the knights, ate the orbs that damaged the final boss. So that was one small way that Anthem could potentially look at changing their boss mechanics and making them a little bit more interesting in my mind. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So uh, Speedbump says, what do you feel is a reasonable time frame to earn cosmetics like a full armor set? I think a full armor set, mm. man, that's a really, really tough question. Um, mm. But if you cap out, if you can cap out every week, I'd say an armor set a week if you do everything that's available yeah. to you is, is a reasonable time frame. But I don't know enough about like how much it costs to buy versus earn. And mm. uh, that's definitely a question for a developer that's working on the product. But but for me, I, I think a week of, of grinding it out and then earning that cool set would be good. What about you guys? I don't know the perfect, mm -hmm. like, uh, if, it feels like this needs to be something that, um, that you need like a spreadsheet in front of you to say fun to <laughs> yeah. versus like, yeah, like there needs to be fun something there. But fun. For, yeah, fun yeah. versus uh, too fast, too quick, too slow, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, for me, I would say if I got a new set every week, I'd be pretty happy. So, Destin, mm -hmm. I'm probably with you there. Yeah. Uh, do that's, we, a, yeah. Like, that's solid grinding. Yeah, yeah. You have to put yeah. in the work, right? They're not just going to hand it yeah. to you, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Jim says, do we know yet which content will be behind daily, weekly lockouts and which content we will have available at all times? Uh, I know some of it, like, we'll definitely have the campaign. That's not going to be locked behind anything. The strongholds will be there. I think most of the daily, mm. weekly stuff is tied to objectives, as far mm -hmm. as I know. Do you guys yeah, know anything more on this front? I believe they're, they're largely speaking challenges. So you kind of go to the, uh, the, the I always call it, there's probably an actual name for it. I call it the basement. The basement of four tasks. <laughs> basically, there's the, the hourglass is there. So like the, you know, the challenges we've seen are things like complete like the, the stronghold, like a daily one, which is complete the stronghold one. So obviously those things, are, those things are slightly more challenge focused. I think the only thing that's behind a kind of, it's not, I, don't, I wouldn't even say it's like a lockout per se, but like you have contracts, which obviously you speak to the agents and they'll pop up on the board, whereas log legendary contracts pop up slightly less frequently. So I guess, I don't know, I don't know what the, the cadence to that is. I don't know whether it is like, you know, once every two days or whether it's once every X number of hours. But um, so I guess contracts are the sort of, because they basically function like bounties. They'd be the sort of things that would probably have some kind of cadence to them. Outside of that, I think everything is basically there, right? As mm -hmm. far as I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm. Um, here's another one from hunting sort of in the same vein, the roadmap only really lays out a month. That seems awfully short. Do we need a longer roadmap that lays out when the next two drops are, they could be fall and next year for all we know now. Um, no, I, I, I personally think the roadmap is good. It gives us enough of a hint without spoiling anything sort of like what we can expect, but there's still exciting stuff. To, to see in there they're not telling us what exotic we're going to be earning for example uh, which is, has been one of my yeah. pet peeves of destiny they kind of give away all their secrets before the content comes out and that's a bummer yeah. or at least that's how it feels yeah uh what about you yeah. guys how do you feel about the release cadence well uh i don't think it's they, they, they've just 
put there as a month. Like it says it begins March, correct? Like it doesn't yeah. say yeah. it's just all through March. So it might actually be longer than that, guys. So don't get your hopes up that everything's going to drop in one month because I don't think mm. that's realistic since there's three stages and there's four weeks mm. in March. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there's going to be new stuff every week. Mm. Uh, and maybe... also on that, yeah. Mm. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I mean, no, continue, please. No, I was saying, and also like, obviously on that graphic mm. as well, they've kind of, on the very first graphic, they've still got the, they've got the little arrows in the top right corner mm. to obviously indicate mm. there's, there's more to it as well. Um, I think as well, that to a certain degree, there's, I think I think there's there's merit to both 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 sides. I can obviously see where like, you know, it'd be nice to be like, hey, this is what a year looks like. But sometimes, you know, with, with these things, like things are still being fine-tuned. And as we found out as well with, you know, it's, it's one of the natures of being transparent, like with the with developers this whole time speaking to us, sometimes mm. there are things that they've spoken to us about that, you know, they, they might have spoken about six months ago and they've changed, mm. right? And that's that's kind of, so there is also, also that risk. So I think I don't think they necessarily want to say, here's, here's what a year looks like when things could change. So I think it's much mm. easier to say, this is what, you know, your game's going to come out. You're going to have a ton of content. You know, that the game itself is probably going to you know, easily give you a good few, good few weeks before you're like, all right, what's next? And then you've got the next update. And then by that time, yeah. um, I think someone, so sometimes sort of people forget as well, like there's, you know, it's, it's one of those weird business things, but, you know, sometimes mm. some companies will talk about things in their new financial year. So obviously, you know, post, like once you get to like the end of March, then they might suddenly start saying, all right, after your first month, here's what else you have. So yeah. I think there's definitely like, there's, there's different cadences. Um, to things but i i feel i feel like by the time we are getting to that position where we're like all right we're diving into that month of content we're already going to be knowing about what's next so i don't feel like yeah. you know they, they've established this line of transparency i don't think they want to suddenly start undoing that so mm-hmm. i'm i'm honestly not worried did you guys read yeah. uh sunday comic strips when you were growing up i used to read calvin and Hobbes a lot yeah. and they would sort of have yeah. daily continuations of these little stories right mm-hmm. and i would be so excited to see what the next thing was so yeah as this is going to be tied to story, I'm incredibly excited about the potential of completing the campaign, but having a hint, like something left over to look Ooh. forward. And we know Ooh. that's coming in March. So we have February, yeah. right? And then mm. we're going to have a continuation of that story in March. And if the next one's in April, and that is the type of cadence that they're going to have for these little story beats to keep you coming mm. back and potentially have new gear and new loot to chase also mm. within those story beats, that yeah. is that is just an awesome cadence. And don't forget, you can also yep. level up all the unlocks of your different javelins during this time mm-hmm. so you can run the content. Yep. There's going to be a lot to do, I think. We're going to know more about the roadmap of just each drop and the cadence of content that we can consume with each drop at launch, of mm. course, which is five days away, mm. which I'm really, really excited yeah. about. Yeah. They have always mentioned that it is a continuing storyline. Now, I hope mm. it's not like an anime uh, cliffhanger where it, it just... Oh. Like, it, just before a death happens, it cuts away. I don't want yeah. any of that. <laughs> no, no, no. But but like yeah. a tease. But, yeah, a tease. A tease mm-hmm. would be good. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I, a tease and then waiting for six months to a year is a little bit too long. Like definitely has to <laughs> yeah. be a also, little bit like, more consistent. It's, it's one thing to wait, but like, yo, I'm not naming names, but if they're going to end on a cliffhanger, they better carry on that cliffhanger in the next story beat and not tell me a completely different story. Right. I'm sitting here waiting to find uh, out what that story yeah. is. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm still waiting to find out that story. I'm still sitting here like, maybe this, maybe this expansion, they're going to tell me what happened. Nope. Right. Okay. okay I'll be back <laughs> All right, we'll just wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex, Alex Kid ninety three asks an important question. I think we should address. Uh, do you think mm-hmm. Anthem's fragmented release hurts the game? Obviously, Origin Premier members are entitled to bonuses, but is it worth it? Mm-hmm. I, I think the fragmented release is really bad. I don't think mm-hmm. it it's an ideal scenario for the consumer, and it's really weird because I find myself saying, "Yeah, the game's out on the fifteenth, and that's when I'm going to play because I'm on PC." And console yeah. players can play for ten hours which is also sort of odd. So like they're going to mm. get to their 10 hour mark and then just be locked out. Why? That doesn't really make sense to me. And then uh, mm. 22nd for everybody else. And then we're all in and able to able yeah. to play together. I don't like anything that fragments the community. So for me, it's, it's a big yeah. negative. And uh, yeah, yeah, I would say it does hurt the game a little bit because now people are avoiding story, story spoilers if they're, if they don't mm. have this early access and yep. it's a little yeah. odd. It's very mm. odd to, to, be yeah. nice about it. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you I mean, feel like it hurts it overall? Story spoilers was a was a big point. Like mm-hmm. uh, for yeah. this game to kind of take off, there is a streaming aspect to it, right? Like there's going to be streamers that need to play through this game and they're going to need to play through story. And then people aren't going to watch their stream because they just don't want to be spoiled, especially mm-hmm. in a Bioware game. And then there's the whole, is this really fair to console users? I'm personally PC, so it doesn't mm-hmm. affect me, but 
I, I feel you guys like 10 hours isn't enough. And that's if you actually signed on, right? Otherwise you have to wait to the 22nd and that's quite yeah. a bit away. And if you're playing with friends and stuff, you know, you're all sitting there while everyone else is getting to play. Also, Alex mm-hmm. kid, great name, by the way. <laughs> I was thinking that just that, yeah, that game, that was yeah. my first ever game. Yeah. That was nice. one of my first two. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, I, I definitely agree with you as well. Like I, I definitely agree. Like, you know, in an ideal world, we would all launch at the same time. I will say that the one, I guess the one saving grace is just purely that, knowing what we know about Anthem's endgame, like either, for example, unlike say like a Destiny release, like when, a, when an expansion comes out and we know there's a raid the next week, like everyone is there grinding because they want to be in that world first race. At least we know like at launch, there's not going to be mm. a kind of world first thing to compete for. So although it's still, you know, although still if, you know, in an ideal world, we would have it at the same time, at least there won't be one of those things where like people are going to not have a chance to compete in this this race because obviously they'll basically just get to the end game and they'll do what they want. So in that mm. respect, at least that's that's the one saving grace. But yeah, it's going to be kind of annoying, especially people like, you know, because people are coming to Anthem for different reasons. You know, like I, I, I'll, I'll, you know, for me, admittedly, I'm there more so as like the looter shooter fan. Um, yeah. I haven't played as many Bioware fans, like as many Bioware games, but I know there's a lot of like Bioware fans out there that like, I want to see the story. So like, I don't want them to, you know, have to have anything spoiled. So yeah, it, it is anything, as you say, anything that fragments the community is, is a little bit uh, of a pain, but. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it is what it is, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. What else? Uh, I don't think PlayStation users actually get early access. I think they no. have to wait till the 22nd, no. right? That's a bummer. Yeah, because they need uh, mm. EA access. Yeah, I believe. and it's not and available on that yeah. Xbox. Yeah. Oof. No. That's not, see, that's not good. That's not good because it's further fragmenting. Mm. Anyway, yeah. but this, yeah. at the same time, PlayStation users get some awesome exclusive games, so they need something bad. <laughs> oh, they sure do. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, hopefully EA and Bioware figure out a way to uh, to m- manage that a little bit better, and so that so that we can all play mm-hmm. together and uh, being able to play yeah. cross platform is, I think, the dream of of every gamer. Oh yeah. To be able to play with my friends on Xbox and my friends on oh, PlayStation yeah. would be great. Hundred percent. So mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, that's everything we had for this episode. There were a few more questions that we don't have time to get to today, but uh, I want to thank my co-host, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me and Dantix also. Guys, no problem thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for joining for the show. Uh, we'll be back next week. It will be launch week on PC and on Xbox. So we're going to be talking a little bit about our first impressions of the game and how much we're enjoying it or not enjoying it and the reasons why for both of those things i'm really really excited for next week five more days four more if you're watching Mm. this tomorrow on youtube friday basically friday (laughs) it is here Mm. and i i am stoked am i going to see you guys online Oh, yes, 100%. Yeah, I'll be there. Oh, you'll log on and be like, he's still online? What? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. Uh, yeah, you'll be encouraging me to play more. I'm like, God damn, I'm going to be so behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Well, in about four days, freelancers, it's going to be time to get to work. I'll see you there. Bye, everybody. All right, cool.